When I was growing up, people started using BRB for be right back or LOL instead of, well, laughing. But I was also using UNFCCC, GMEF, GEO. I know and use those acronyms like they're the back of my hand. And that's only because I spent, up until the start of this year, two years working with the United Nations Environment Program. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't know those terms, though. You probably use BRB, or at least have heard of it yourself, though, because my mum has, and really, I think that says everything. <laughs> Whenever I've tried to explain the work that I do at the UN or why it's important to my mum, I realise that these acronyms are awesome for me with the work that I do, but to my mum, they made absolutely no sense. And that wasn't just a problem for me, but it was also a problem for the United Nations. It's surrounded in so much confusion, even though that there's so much that it can do. My mum used to ask me all the time why I kept going to Kenya, and I couldn't tell her it was to negotiate at another policy conference. What I had to tell her about was the actual projects, the potential that those policy forums could deliver, and the impacts that it could have on people. For example, when I was in Kibera, a slum area in Kenya, I visited Melissa, and she was able to show me the water wells and solar panels that she had implemented in her township that directly benefited 300 people. That project was only possible from funding that was an outcome of that policy forum that brought me to Kenya in the first place. Now, I'm probably a little bit unfair on my mum making jokes of her all the time in public like this. Um, she doesn't appreciate it. And it's a little bit unfair now because I know she's not the only person confused by the UN. My friends don't get what I do. And most people in the general public probably fall in the same boat. The extent of this problem is a huge one for me, for people that work within the United Nations, and for the United Nations itself. People see it as being a distant and irrelevant institution. They don't see how it's relevant in their day-to-day -day lives or the good that it can do. And when I was with the UN, since I've left the UN, I've spent so much time thinking about, how do you fix the UN? How can I fix the UN? <laughs> And I'm not going to lie, despite this talk, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what I do know, though, is that stories about the impacts and the benefits that the UN can provide will always far outweigh the nitty-gritty policy details and the acronyms that are often associated with it. And that's why I started and am now editing Speak Your Mind. We're not a traditional news publication just talking about who goes to which UN conference. We're also not an NGO talking about what advocacy points are relevant that week. We're a mix of the both. We understand the policy, but because everyone involved is a young person, we grew up using BRB. We know how to talk about this with other people. We don't focus on the policy in terms of where or how it was made. Sometimes we don't even focus on the outcome itself, because $300 billion doesn't mean all that much when you don't hear the stories of Melissa's and the hundreds and thousands of others that are possible through the work of the UN from all around the world. Like mine, for example. When I was in high school, I started this crazy campaign. I had this idea. I wanted to change a million light bulbs from incandescent ones to fluorescent ones. I managed to do that. Australia then became the first country to pass a law that banned incandescent lights. When I started at the UN, they gave me an opportunity to work on a campaign to take that law to 192 other countries. The entire world. And it's crazy. Um, and that's why I'm here today, because I had this small little idea as a young little teenager, and I was able to spread and share that and implement it in my community. It spread across Australia, and with the help of the UN, it then spread around the world and is currently spreading. The UK is changing that law later this year. And for me, that's the power and that's the potential of the UN. It, and it's one that I always wish people would see in the same way that I've seen and have experienced, being able to see beyond the acronyms and looking at the UN as a platform that can take ideas from anybody, from people like me, to the rest of the world. Thank you.